off to see a man about a plane. Chatting with a guy uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it turns out that he works for an engineering firm in Fareham, and they make parts for aeroplane engines. Specifically, he said, air-cooled. Air-cooled, I thought, oh, Volkswagen, don't be silly, they're very unreliable. They're always on the side of the road. And no, sure enough, they basically make bits to make aeroplane fly properly in the sky with Volkswagen engines. So just after I'd heard about this whole Volkswagen engines going aeroplanes thing, which I thought was utter madness, I then was browsing Marketplace on good old Facebook and I came across an aeroplane. <laughs> Oi, back in the room, back in the room. Uh, what looked fairly like an aeroplane and it just kind of made sense to go and have a look at it really. We've got old air-cooled engines kicking around. There's an aeroplane. You know, job done. Anyway, that's as sort of as deep and meaningful as it got. So we're on the way to find ourselves half an aeroplane. Watch the bit, it's got like the middle bit. No wings, I don't think. We are off to meet with Tony, who's gonna tell us a little bit about it and who's gonna hopefully um, say it's a good idea to stick one of these VW engines in the shell of an aeroplane. So we, we thought, yeah, we'll just build a plane. Why not? That'd be fine and easy and doable and safe. <laughs> And we've got a load of old Volkswagen engines kicking about, eh? So we'll just stick one of those in them. And it turns out they do that. It turns out they put like half a Volkswagen engine into a, one of these light, light aircraft and you can fly it. Absolute nut job. <laughs> Hold your breath. Must be the man. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello. Hello. Young Adam. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, ta. Yeah. So, we know Tony, or I know Tony, because we've been watching some recent exploits with um, a famous old car plane. Uh, movie, movie car. Uh, I feel that I now know Tony. Intimately is the wrong word, but you know what I'm saying. And I mentioned it to Tony that we know nothing about aeroplanes, but we found out that you can put a Volkswagen engine into an aeroplane. We're going to come down and look have an aero engine. Have a look at an aero engine. If you're trying to sell something, you're going to say it's a good project, right? You're going to say it's a good thing. Well, it's a big task. <laughs> it's a big task. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe there's half an aeroplane. There is about half an aeroplane. Half an aeroplane. Yeah, oh, it's the main bit. It's the That's main why bit, there's right? work. So yeah, there's work to do. Excellent. Right. So uh, Nigel's rebuilt a couple of these uh, Volkswagen aero engines. They are different to okay. uh, Volkswagen. The core is basically there, but there are some subtle changes. Aviation is 20, 30 years behind cars, maybe more, maybe 50 years behind hmm. cars. Okay. Now people are starting to use electronic ignition, but the thing is, a magneto, as long as you keep spinning it, it's going to keep generating a spark. So it's reliable. So that's what you want. You want reliability out of an engine. It's not like a car engine where it's constantly going to idle to, you know, you're going up and down so through the gears. Boy racer take is not quite what we're looking for. No, no, no. Reliability and power for weight is what you're looking at. This is Nige. Hello, Nige. Hi, Nige. Oh, this is looking beautifully cozy. Just gone in here. That is looking fantastic. Engine. What have you got here? Go. MGTD. Wow. Oh. Are you making it fly? <laughs> <laughs> it's got that feel about it. Well, we're oh, still struggling to bring the bleed the brakes at the moment. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. This is a Volkswagen derived aircraft engine. Uh, that's a 90 horsepower engine. And this is a 2.4 litre. Right, okay. okay. What's the main difference between the one you'd find in the back of a van and this, this aeroplane one right here? Yeah. The majority of the times, the crankcase is magnesium. So you'll often find an adapter that goes on the front to bolt the pedal on. Plus, obviously, you're going to put, instead of a gearbox on the back, you're going to put a magneto on the back. So you'll have a magneto drive yeah. on the back of it. So there's lots of different things to set up for ignition. Are you taking this in? <laughs> I'm not sure what a magneto sure is. From a, yeah. I don't know what it came out of. I bought it in Holland 
and I never got to see the aircraft, the crashed aircraft that it came out of. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> did you did you hear that bit? Crashed aircraft that it came out of. So this <laughs> So it's big sums before you put the lump in the front of yes. the plane. Yeah. Exactly where the engine is and the angle it's at and the height it's at is quite critical. It's very simple maths, because it's basically extreme reaction of force is about a point. It, However, you have to take that into a seesaw, really. Okay. I can understand a seesaw. It sounds like big math, but if you actually wrote it all out, it's not that. It, it's what you do all the time if you're if you're so playing. So you alluded to a bit of, a bit of um, A level physics, right? Yeah. No, it's no more than A level physics. Yeah. Adam, how was your A level physics? Got D. <laughs> I mean, essentially, the Volkswagen engine as a light aircraft engine is really common. If we had to go and find a Volkswagen engine, we could probably find a Volkswagen engine within yeah. a month, or if we really tried hard, probably find yeah. one in a couple of weeks. Yeah. As long as you look after it and you don't do something stupid with it. <laughs> so of those 20 odd planes that have gone up in the air, they kind of stayed up in the air? No, 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 not at all, no. Um... <laughs> did, you, did you hear that bit? I remember one I did. <laughs> I owned this aeroplane, I think, two or three times. I bought it from the... Somebody else had crashed it, bought it, sold it to some new owners who I think only flew it three times before he, he got the wrong handle. He grabbed the air brake lever, not the flap lever, and was trying to pull all this sort of stuff and just went donk into the ground and smashed it up. Uh, and I ended up buying the wreckage back again. So we were just at the uh, workshop with Tony and Nige and they've shown us some fantastic stuff in there but we're just on our way down to um, the store to go and have a look at the the plane we're buying. Um, might, we're, might be. Good point. The plane we might be buying, we're not we're not sure yet. There was a bit there was a bit more to the engineering I think. A bit more to the engineering I thought. There was a lot there. Throwing an old Beetle engine in there. <laughs> but uh, you know I'm thought, sure the Wright brothers didn't have uh, all these engineering stuff going on, right? They just yeah, give it no, a go. They yeah. knew what they were doing. That's why they're called the Wright brothers, not the wrong brothers. <laughs> Would you fly this? Uh, <laughs> yes, with my years of piloting experience, I would absolutely fly a plane with no wings. <laughs> A plane with no wings? <laughs> I'd a plane sit, with I'd no wings it. is like a lion with no heart. No, a plane, like a plane with, with no, wings. no sail. So do you think you would have the, uh, the cojones to, to pilot? If I didn't have a wife and kids yeah. that I care for daily, we need a single person. So you're suggesting like... I do it? No, no, a single <laughs> person that has no living relatives. Cojones. Okay, right. A hermit. We need a hermit need pilot. A hermit. That wouldn't be missed. A hermit with a permit. Maybe they want to pilot our plane. <laughs> I don't know. Do anyone here fly a plane? They might not be in the mood. Oi. Do you want to be in our movie? <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a design challenge set in the 1960s to design a little single seat aeroplane that would perform rather well. Uh, and it was a French company that went for it, and a young French designer designed this. Uh, and it wasn't the winning design, the other design won. This was the Chasley, named after the gentleman who, uh, who invented it. In reality, that model of plane that he's mentioning was so popular that they made over two and a half of them. <laughs> That's never not funny. <laughs> it gets me every time. <laughs> How long would it take you? I don't know if this isn't an option. How long would it take you to rebuild this? You're probably looking at... Well, it's the difference between making it look like an aeroplane and getting it finished. A thousand man hours. If you're used to it as a woodworker, it's not a problem. You think of all the people in the war, you know, there were cabinet makers and coffin makers building mosquitoes, <laughs> right? So it's not beyond the ability of somebody who's got some woodworking skills to do it. We're gonna need to resurrect some chickies, cabinet makers. No, Mr. James. Mr. James? Mr. Kev? And Mr. Kev. That's the plane duo. Yeah, don't tell them that. And, and Look, oh, it's a couple of days, but that's- A couple of day. days. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the wooden main spar. So as you see, the outer portion is actually. 
Oh, well, that's the other thing. Everything in aeroplanes is in proper measurements. <laughs> no metric. You know, this is exactly, so this is, this is the whole thing. So all of these drawings make an aeroplane. It's not just like, I'll screw something into here or I'll screw something into there. It's got to stay there. You know, self-tappers do not come into this. <laughs> <laughs> it's nut and bolt uh, and plates and load spreading and all that sort of stuff. You know? What are we known for? <laughs> Nothing, but that's beside the point. However, precision engineering, attention to detail, all of those things that you need for aeronautical engineering is nothing that we're about. I mean, the, the, where, where you're on a really good streak is this has not been crashed. It's never flown, right? Well, <laughs> that is good news. It. So this has been crashed, that's been broken in half, right? So that's got to come out and go into a jig and we've got to cut all the front end off because it's just rubbish. How's the pilot? Uh, better days, you survived, but um, you know, it wasn't brilliant. Um, but there's so much of that that has to be reclaimed and redone again. Um, but that's not a, you know, a task. Whereas this has never flown. So it's straight, it's not bent, it's not twisted. Uh, it's a good canvas. It's easy. Easy. When we just left the lathes, there was a conversation that we didn't quite get on camera. And both Tony and Nigel sitting very quietly over there said that everything can be resolved over a beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I have a feeling that... We need to start drinking. We need to start drinking. <laughs> I think you're right. So a lot to think about, really. It's quite an eye-opener. Um, I think we probably do need those pubs to open. <laughs> With a sensible head on us. I think we're going to have to think quite hard about this. A sensible head on the beer? 